Hello Internet! In this video we're going to be looking at combining Unity and OBS to create some interactive game-based overlays inside of streams or recordings or whatever you might want. Um, so I've already done it. Uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, but we're going to take it a little bit further than this. So you, our OBS works by creating a scene and then embedding sources into that scene. One of those sources is a web page. Uh, so you can render a browser into your OBS scene and then actually get various overlays. This is used for a lot of different things. A lot of common streaming software uses these kind of overlays that are hosted in some third party service to actually provide all sorts of things. So those cool somebody subscribed or somebody followed or whatever. A lot of those are rendered using HTML. Um, the problem with that is typically you need JavaScript. And it can be a really tedious and long and just kind of annoying. This is a, uh, like, I think I wrote two lines of code and then just threw some cubes into a scene. And then we get this fancy spinning cube. Uh, this is running Unity's uh, WebGL stuff. Uh, so it's actually running in an HTML5 canvas. And then we're just getting this. Uh, there are some downsides to this. There is a loading bar when you reload this and things like that. Uh, but it's really simple and straightforward. So if you just want basic stuff, this can give you a really handy thing. Or if you want like a game inside of your stream, uh, you can do that too. Um, so the way this works is you just create a basic Unity game and compile it to WebGL. Um, so I just have this basic sample scene. Um, I did have some trouble with Unity versions and figuring out which Unity version could actually correctly compile the HTML5. Um, the two versions that I previously had installed didn't actually work. They threw various errors and it just wouldn't wouldn't get past the compilation phase. Um, but this new version on 2019.3.1 F1 works. Uh, um, at least it seems to. Uh, so you just select WebGL. You don't need to change any other settings. Some features may not work in WebGL. I'm not entirely sure which ones. Uh, but once you do that, you just build your scene and throw it somewhere. I've been putting mine in my builds folder, not there, in my builds folder and then just dropping them there uh, and, and using that. The way this ends up working, if we go back to OBS, we get my tiled face and I get a really long arm. Um, <laughs> but uh, the way this ends up working, if, if I open this, this is sort of how it's embedded. So we have to make sure we've selected a local file. We're running this locally. Um, the advantage of that is because Unity games can get kind of big, um, since it's a local file, the loading goes a little bit faster. Um, you can tweak the size and width. I've just left, the, left them as the defaults. And you can also inject custom CSS. I'm not sure what advantage there is there. I personally have, have never had a reason to change this, uh, but it's there. The one major, I guess the two major uh, useful things are this refresh browser when scene becomes active. Um, what this is going to do is automatically refresh the source when you select that scene. Um, to give you an idea of what that looks like, I have a separate one, uh, this stream AFK thing, you can't see it, um, but it's going to remove my camera, but what it does is actually renders a JavaScript thing that types out a I'm AFK message uh, when I'm AFK in a stream. This refreshes every time I visit it. Um, and if I don't do that, you'll see if I go back here, our cubes are still spinning. We didn't get a loading thing. That scene is exactly where it was when I left it. But if I go back to this stream, it's going to restart. That is what that, that setting is going to change. Um, so if you want your scene to restart every time you switch scenes, maybe you're doing another AFK scene like I have, um, or maybe some sort of other transitional thing, that setting is there for you. Um, when you're testing, you can also refresh the cache of the current page, and that's actually going to completely re-render it. And here you'll actually see we get a loading screen, um, but then it pops up and everything's good. We're going to be changing this just slightly because I want to go a little bit further beyond this. Uh, this is just rendering basic Unity stuff, but we can actually do more than that. Um, so what I want to do is actually use a green screen. Uh, so we're going to select our main canvas and switch to a solid color. Um, it's already selected on green because I've, I've already done this video. The audio was just awful, so I'm redoing this. Um, but if you don't, if your scene has green already and you don't really want to do that, uh, you can switch to like magenta. That tends to work pretty well as well. Uh, pretty much you just need to select a color that is not going to appear in your scene. Because this is all virtual stuff, 
we actually have a lot more freedom than you might have if you were using a physical green screen. Um, because this is a single solid color and every single pixel here is going to match exactly that color. Unless we have transparency, this is going to cause it to be very uh, crisp, hopefully. Uh, and we don't need to do a lot of fuzzing. So even if we are using a green screen, or, or like if we have grass or trees or something, typically if you use a green screen, those would get masked as well and you would lose those. Um, with this, you should be able to tweak that and make it very tight. So only this specific color or like a color within a pixel or a like fraction or, or two renders. Uh, and so, so it should be nicer that way. But by selecting this solid color, we've effectively created a green screen, which means I'm just going to render those three cubes. What I want to do is just sort of render it above my camera, like over here. Uh, and so we're going to just build this. The first build is slow and takes a while. Uh, but after you do that, uh, you get an error. For some reason. Okay. Rotation could not be found. What? It's right there. How, how did I break this scene by refilming this? That doesn't make a bit of sense. Uh, we're gonna, wait, hold on. Oh, okay, I completely broke this project by uh, moving the assets folder into the build. Uh, we're gonna undo that and, and build again. And it's broken again. Uh, okay. How assets, scripts, rotation, it's still here. This should be fine. We'll, we'll save it and, and reload it. Um, you shouldn't encounter this issue. And if you do, you've probably done what I've done and broken something. Uh, but it should just compile. Um, I don't know, that, that's weird. That's never happened before. Uh, but anyway, HTML5 and Unity is a little bit weird, but it tends to work. Um, so this should, I, I should also point out, this should work with any game engine that supports HTML5. You don't need to use Unity for this. I'm just using Unity because it's what I have and what I know. Um, but theoretically, anything that will render in HTML5 Canvas should apply itself into uh, OBS. So you should be able to use any of those if you're working with like Game Maker or um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm missing all of these HTML5 game engines. I'm, I know there's a ton. I can't think of them off the top of my head though. One that starts with a C, like Cartographer or something. Um, but anyway, we have recompiled this and so our scene should have been updated. Uh, if I open this up, this is where it is. Uh, you can see it was updated a minute ago, uh, but our scene hasn't updated. You, or OBS caches the web page, so it's not constantly making this same request. Uh, and that helps with performance, but it means that you need to actually go and refresh this when you do that. So now we should see this uh, glaring, oh, you know this, uh, uh, that whole re-recording -re thing, uh, it's, it's becoming a problem here. Let's just delete this. <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right, so we get we get green. Um, so this is just a, a really kind of uh, gross green thing, but it lets us do it with the chroma key. You already saw it works. Um, and so we'll, because there's no like anti-aliasing happening or anything, we we just remove all of the, the extra stuff. And this kind of gives us these fancy cubes. We can right click and go to filters. There are two types of filters in OBS, audio filters. Um, we're not gonna use those, there's no audio in this thing, uh, but you could embed audio into your game and use that in the HTML5 canvas and then apply them here. Uh, there's a full bunch of them there, uh, but we're more interested in the effects filters. There's a bunch of them, they should all be able to work on this, but we really only care about the chroma key. Uh, and so chroma key is going to take a specific color, in this case, green, uh, you can select specific ones or customize them if you want. Uh, we can just use the standard green uh, thing. We don't need to change anything. There's nothing even remotely close to green in this scene. Uh, so we don't we don't need to worry about anything fading out. 
Uh, you may need to change some of these filters depending on what objects you're using. Uh, if they get too close to the uh, key color, they're going to get removed and you might get some graininess. Um, so you can, you can probably reduce these pretty significantly to actually remove them. Uh, you can also reduce the opacity and that should just remove your object. Uh, but yeah, there's a, there's a whole bunch of settings here. You can play with them, kind of get it tuned to what you need. Depending on what you're building, it's going to change. Uh, but for me, that's all we need. And then we can just plop that over the face and, and we're good. Um, there is this WebGL thing. Uh, Unity embeds a uh, logo, I guess, at the bottom of the page. We can go in and remove that if we want to. It's just in the HTML. Um, <laughs> it's in, in this page here. So if we were to open that, it should be one of these. I don't know exactly which one it is. Uh, maybe one of those. <laughs> it's a good guess. So we'll see. Uh, but if we reload that, we will know whether that actually worked or not. It looks like it's gone now. Um, you can also just tweak these settings. I've never needed to modify the CSS. Um, I've never really, really had any reason to do that. Uh, but this gives you a way to do that. Um, so if you need to embed things into Unity, this gives you a way to do it, uh, or into, into OBS rather. Um, I, I personally am going to use this more for streaming. Uh, I think that that would be kind of handy because then you can get some fancy overlays that look interesting and can also hopefully be interactive. Um, I just have spinning cubes as kind of a proof of concept, but there's nothing preventing you from going far further with this and either embedding a full game uh, that like plays itself or does something, or something that actually interacts with uh, your chat or something like that. Um, I just haven't gotten that far. Uh, but this is basically like proof of concept. You can embed HTML5 into OBS, which means Unity can build HTML5 and then, and then you take that the step further and add it to OBS. Uh, so there's, there's like that basic concept. Hopefully this is clear and you can kind of understand it. Um, I have mostly been trying to pick up Twitch lately, um, so that's sort of where this is coming from if you're wondering. Um, I did a stream on Sunday, kind of kind of just exploring things and kind of exploring some old projects that I have, doing some Docker stuff and some Unity stuff. Um, so I'll leave a link to that in the description if you want to join. Um, mostly just still figuring that out. It's been a very long time since I've done Twitch, uh, so kind of getting back into all of that. Uh, but also, just kind of figured it'd be handy. Um, this is a new mic. I mentioned that I'm re-recording this and you saw like some of the stuff had already been done. Uh, that's because I'm re-recording it and uh, the audio was terrible. So let me know what you think of my mic setup because I'm still figuring everything out. And it was terrible the first time. Um, it was super muddy and, and you couldn't really understand it. And like the, the software for it had included a de-esser that just absolutely ruined everything. Um, so that should be gone now and hopefully this sounds great. Uh, and if it doesn't, then I'll fix it. Uh, so let me know what you think. Uh, but that's pretty much it for now. So I guess until next video, see you internet.